What a week of fantasy football. Some no-name guys being monsters. Some big-name guys pooping their pants. And you got my emotional journey through it all with you. Make sure you find out who were studs and, and who were Mitchell Trubisky's on today's episode. Foot Clan. Who? Oh. This is show 800. And so I, I just I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you for supporting this podcast. All of our loyal listeners, all of the Foot Clan at jointhefoot.com, we appreciate you. Uh, we get to do something very, very fun each and every day, and it's because of you. So we just wanted to say thank you for 800 great shows. I hope we can give you at least a Eight. million more. <laughs> To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Andy's back. Hey. Welcome into the show. Monday, October 21st. I am back. Sort of. Yeah, I made some. I, I, I suspect I made some very <laughs> unsavory road trip snack decisions on the way back. That is a terrible adjective because I'll bet they were very savory. That's true. They were delicious. I, the point is, is I got myself nice and sick for the weekend. I got back from uh, fall break with the family. Thank you, by the way. Feeling very insecure about the amount of best friend talk I had to listen to mm. each and every thank, day. Thank you, I, I did tell you it was of the week. Right. And I was grateful for the yeah. time we had, Mike. Yes. It, oh, you did? It, yeah. you, you, it's just the week? Yeah. yeah. Oh. But now, Andy, who's your best friend? Yeah. Let me put this letter away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and withdraw my resignation. <laughs> no, it's good to be back. I got to watch a lot of football yesterday in between uh, hallucination spells. Mm. Uh, I was fevered up in bed, but I'm here today. It is show 800, and we've just gone through a heck of a week in fantasy football because I, I, I tweeted this out. Scott Barrett was the source of the original tweet. I, I retweeted it with the hashtag why people quit fantasy f football. Mm, I did that last night. Which is uh, <laughs> you quit last <laughs> night. Yeah. Yes. He, here's team A. Matt Ryan, David Johnson, Carrion Johnson, Will Fuller, Tyler Boyd, Evan Ingram. That team scored a total of 16.8 fantasy points. <laughs> Here's team B. Jacoby Brissett, Chase Edmonds, Latavius Murray, Marvin Jones, Zach Pascal, Rhett Ellison. That team scored 177.8 fantasy mm. points. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, uh. no matter what you do, sometimes Cliff Kingsbury happens. All right, let's get right into it. You can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow each of us, you can do so. Instagram and Twitter, the same handle at Andy Holloway, at Jason FFL, at FF Hitman. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. Look, you got to get on the IG. The content is amazing. If you've ever wanted to see me lay a smooch on a pig, that's on the IG. And that is not a euphemism. That is not a metaphor. <laughs> Literally, it's, it's me. It's me smooching a pig, giving yeah, a kiss yeah. to uh, a hog. Most of my posts of late are just my son breaking away for touchdowns. Yeah, that and ice cream. That's oh. true. There was a lot of ice. You guys brought that up on the show. There was a lot of ice cream that may have played a part in getting sick as you well. Think? My meals consist of ice cream, and I keep coming down with a cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's get sophisticated. Uh. It's Monday. All right, we've got Monday Punday one-liners from the Foot Clan. Reaction to the weekend. Let's start here, Matt. Why? Why? Why, Matthew? Oh, he he got injured, but come on, that was that was late. late. Carry on my bench the next few weeks. Mm. He also got hurt. Carry on, Gonson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, this is a good one, Devin. Single carry. Mm, it works, but it's not true. I believe he had seven <laughs> carries. Feels like one. <laughs> Carson Wentz the bed. Oh, uh, no. Oh, uh, he did indeed. For you, Jason. <laughs> Marv Wynn Jones. Yes. It'd be nice if he spaced them out every once in a while, but uh, if you had him, you won. <laughs> Chase Shredmans. 
<laughs> okay, shredded the defense. I get it. Marlon yeah. Slack. Yeah. Oh, they stacked the box. They let Jacoby take over. Victorious Murray. Yes, that was an excellent pivot. That worked out very well. It's working out well to play your running backs against the Bears. Yeah. Look, Mark, no hands, Drews. Oh. <laughs> oh, that yes. one is vicious and so very true. It was a little rainy. Oh. Yeah. Huh? Other, pe other people could care. Yeah, the itis. Let's get back to the sophisticated yes. names. Cl Cliff Dingleberry. <laughs> it's hanging on. Oh. D. JK? Oh. Yeah, that DJ. was a JK. Kenny Garbage Day? Eh. Okay. Kenny Gone All Day? Unfortunately. Uh, yeah. And then my favorite. Waller Waller Bills, y'all. Waller Waller Yo! Bills, y'all. It's funny because he had two touchdowns. We're talking about Goo 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 Tube. Yeah, he honestly had more but should than have two. had four. Yes. Yeah, I right. saw these because I know you've got them on your roster, Mike. And you were your reaction to his first touchdown was finally... Well, look, he he was one of those guys where the yardage, like a positive regression for touchdowns was going to happen. It happened in a big way. He should have had four. He had a touchdown that was called back on a, just a stupid penalty, and then had the the breakaway catch where get the get those legs up, Walrus. I mean, you let a guy ankle tackle you when you're six five, three hundred fifty. I don't. I don't know if you are aware of our situation in the NFL League One, uh, Andy, where we are playing in the celebrity expert leagues of the NFL, um, where we have of the six weeks four times finished with a high score, and we are redecorating their set. At least you're not bragging. No, no, no. I would never do that. Um, w we we made a boo boo. We did. We, did you leave the Wallers on the bench? Yeah. Because of the injury, we had. Why didn't you come to me, boys? Yeah, well, it's not like we didn't have a good tight end replacement. Well, well who was it? Hunter. Yes. yes. Hunter Henry was so in. You but tried to ride that wave. I mean, he's we, clearly not on fire. We and you still, put Goo Goo Gajub on the bench. We did. I blame that must Mike. feel gross. I no. I take. Full. Did we lose? No. no, we won, but we would have had the high oh, score. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is a very small. <laughs> Great. Let's get into the rewind. Weekly Rewind. All right, the Weekly Rewind brought to you by Sleeper. Adam Thielen exited the game after suffering a hamstring injury on a touchdown. He's got a short week ahead. They play on Thursday Night Football, so I would plan to be without Adam Thielen. I'm yes. actually really curious how we approach Kirk Cousins. Man. Because he's been just fire. Four touchdowns. Thielen left early, and I wonder if people are going to run away from, you know, kind of staying in the flames with Cousins because Thielen's out, and maybe that's a mistake. I would – early streaming tight end option, Kyle Rudolph. Had his first touchdown of the year in this game. Big they Irv looked, also caught a few passes. Yeah, they, without Adam Thielen, and if they stick with this passing game, that's going to be important. Uh, Matt Ryan injured his ankle, quickly ruled out. You know, we don't know a lot. No update on the severity. I think he might miss a game, but we'll find out later this week. Matt Ryan hasn't missed a game in a long time. Yeah, he he's one of those players where he's been absolutely nuclear, and then you start him with full confidence, and you get the worst game yeah. imaginable. It's gross. It's very ugly in Atlanta right now. They, they were a fourth down conversion away from 0-7. I can't believe that Dan Quinn has not been fired yet. Well, he took him to a Super Bowl, and so you give him you give you him give him more than seven games. Yes, you give him complete grace on last season. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's coming, Jason. Be patient. I will wait no longer. Though, though Matt Schaub's not going to lead them to glory. Dan Quinn will be on the way out soon enough. Uh, Carry on Johnson did not return after the knee injury. Do we have an update on his status? No. Okay, we'll keep you up to date. Will Fuller left in the first quarter, didn't return, hamstring injury. This is a consistent Will Fuller problem. And fun fact. My league of record team had both Carryon Johnson and Will Fuller going this past mm. weekend. There were a lot of early th – this week stunk because the injuries that happened, other than Matt Ryan's, they were all early in the game. DJ, you know, gets a carry and then isn't involved. Fuller, Carryon Johnson. Yeah. Uh, uh, Matt, I've never seen lower scores in our league of record waiting until Monday night than this week. I mean, there were games like the San Francisco game where basically everybody in it was – useless for fantasy purposes there were a bunch of games tied 10 10 12 12 low scoring games the man for fantasy football it, tons of things are are very feel unfair i mean this is 
just part of the game that we we love and you have to accept this. But when the weather comes down like that in Washington where you had reports, you knew it was going to be raining and it was going to be downpouring before the game, but then it was, well, it should clear up. It should be light during the game. And then it turns into an absolute slosh fest. That was the wettest field I've seen in a long time. You those those guys were on a full slip and slide yeah. when they would dive. Yeah, if you if you aren't familiar with what uh, you know weather usually does, rain does not actually hinder fantasy points. On, usually, rain is fine f- even for the passing game. It's wind right. that comes with the rain. Uh, if it's windy, that gets in the way of pa- passing games. So you don't really factor that in too much. Rain is not what happened there. Rain was rain is one thing that it, Noah, if you it, Noah was there. Yes, the ark. <laughs> this was, was. I mean that I'm. I don't. You say get a on long the time, boat. Stop playing the game. It is important though to know that you can throw out the performances. That's the important thing to do. Like George Kittle's a good example. Like he, they weren't throwing the football. They couldn't do anything. Right. They're in the slosh. They handed him the, the this one sad play. They were on the goal line. Yes. and they did an inside handoff to George Kittle, and he tries to turn the edge and just falls over. I mean, there was no option for him to turn the corner because you need cleats six feet long to turn that corner. When, yeah. when the game finished and Bosa from the Niners did his belly slide in the yes. water. That looked fun. It looked like a blast, but it, remi- it reminded me of the Geico commercial where the guy, the soccer <laughs> game, he does the knee slide. And he's sliding around forever. I just, it was a slip yeah. and slide. It was unbelievable. So, yeah, throw that game out. It was absolutely ridiculous. And then you, you throw the, the field conditions in. Matt Burita still could have possibly been okay, except he got taken off for a concussion protocol, managed to clear that, and then got poked in the eye. Like, come on, man. There were two, this just feels two bad. bad eye pokes this, this week. Uh, Evan Ingram got one, yes. too. Edo Smith carted off with head and neck injuries. Delaney Walker didn't return against the Chargers. Actually saw Joni Smith do something. We'll talk more about the Titans, man. Well, well, what do we do? Well, I, I, I listened to the show, believe it or not, despite how much you guys were loving on each other and Jay Grizz, who I don't support, you know. No, I love Jay <laughs> he, Grizz. He wasn't happy this weekend. Yes. But the, uh, there were only a couple things that I disagreed with from a distance uh, while I was eating ice cream. Mm-hmm. And one was honestly the, the Mariota Tannehill take that it's the same difference. To me, and I said this before in the preseason. You did. Yeah. I I it's not the same difference to me. I I'm I was very interested in passing options once Tannehill took over. He had a three hundred yard plus passing game. The big difference between those two is Ryan Tannehill takes more time to let deep reads develop. And he's got the arm and the willingness to try to go take this job. The team let him do it. He supported like Corey Davis had a great game. Yes. Yeah. You know, and you had also a career high in catches for um uh AJ AJ Brown yeah. and then Jonah Smith had a 64 yard game. So it'll be interesting moving forward. The Titans were out there on social media bragging about the passer rating and performance of Ryan Tannehill, oh. which is a sign of oh, oh, things Dan. to come. Why Get why are you putting Mariota in a body Get bag? Body. They tag they tagged Mariota on it. No, they didn't. They did not. But uh we'll talk more they about did underneath though. We'll talk we'll see what happens. We got to talk about the what happened in Arizona. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, because lots of thoughts about that. Basically, David Johnson came in for a snap, came off the field. You never saw him again, really. And this was a really strange situation. So I'm curious where you guys, are you pure angry here or do you understand the extenuating circumstances of, look, I don't think David Johnson was going to be active for this game at all. There was no chance of it. King- Kingsbury came out on Friday and said, if the game was today, he wasn't going to play. Yeah. But then DJ Foster got hurt. Their other running back got hurt late in the week in practice, and then we're in a situation where, look, you could have – I don't understand the logic of having him active if you can't play him because you got two running backs. What happens if Chase Edmonds goes out? Do you jeopardize David Johnson's future? But fantasy owners, last week when it was a late active for David Johnson, he was the bell cap. Right. So what, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, it, you, you worry a little bit. First, first you mourn. First you yes. get past your – you put your anger to bed. Uh, but you also need to monitor the situation. Adam Schefter reporting that Jay Ajayi is working out for the Cardinals on Tuesday and Spencer Ware also scheduled to work out. Now, maybe that's a DJ Foster thing. It's probably a combination of they don't know what they have in David Johnson and DJ Foster's injured. They need depth, but it's not a good thing because if DJ 
If 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 David Johnson was like, okay, he's totally fine. We just gave him rest. Chase Edmonds was the hot hand. DJ's fine, and Chase Edmonds is great. They wouldn't be desperate to bring in backs to work out. So I I think he's not fine. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. That Chase, Chase Edmonds came out and said it in, in the post game press conference. Chase said, "Look, I went over to DJ. We both knew you can't play professional football at the running back position." Like he was, I told him I'll carry the load. Don't worry about it. We need oh, you back. Ne oh, we need man, you back next week. Now next week's a tough situation for fantasy owners again. You got New Orleans, who's one of the best defenses in football. Especially, and then you're going to have especially against the run. Yeah, especially against the run. I mean, for goodness sakes, we'll talk about Matt Nagy too. But um, you know, what do you do with these two backs? What if you have David Johnson active again? Man, if he's active, and you got to pick one guy. I guess we'll wait for yeah, the reports. You got to get the reports throughout the week, and and honestly, if if Cliff Kingsbury had come out and said after the game, yeah, David, he he wanted to give it a go, yeah, we we gave him the opportunity. He went out and he just didn't have it. That would that's one thing. So like the reason why fantasy players are upset and he, look, you you know where I have sided on coaches not being forthright with information. It, but he comes out and says, well, yeah, this was the plan. He was going to be the emergency back. Like, really? The, your, your, your matchup against the Giants was turned around because you, you threw down the smoke bomb and the, and the, the crazy funhouse mirrors. And they, you're not expecting Chase Edmonds to come out and destroy you. That had no bearing on you winning the game. You have to wonder, too, if the field conditions, the fact it started to rain, it just kind of ruled out. And obviously, Edmonds was having a day, the greatest day of his career. And now, I mean, he's a different player than David Johnson. Edmonds. Far more explosive. Edmonds has the entire year, even before David Johnson got banged up, when it comes to the pure runner, Chase Edmonds has looked vastly better than David Johnson. Look, DJ still looks great in the passing game. And when he gets the head of steam, he can be elusive. But. Chase Edmonds looks like he fits this scheme a lot better. We have a waiver show tomorrow. We'll talk about Chase Edmonds, obviously. He should Hope, be already I on know. your bench. I've got a lot of questions on Twitter today saying, how much fab for him? I said zero. He should have been on your bench three weeks ago when we told you to put him on your bench. <laughs> but he's not, you know, circumstances sure. for a lot of teams, especially those that don't have David Johnson, maybe didn't ensure themselves Chase Edmonds out there. We'll talk about it. Weekly Rewind News brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of news. Get the app today. Before we move into the stud muffins, want to thank today's sponsor. Look, it's Harry's. Humans have been shaving for thousands of years, but the secret to a great shave hasn't changed much. That's why Harry's doesn't overcharge you to add gimmicky features to their razors. And Harry's, look, it, it's a return to the essential. Quality. Durable blades at a fair price, just two bucks per blade. They've cut out the middleman by manufacturing blades in their German blade factory, which has been honing precision blades for a century. That means you get incredibly high quality blades at factory direct prices. There's no risk to trying them out. If you don't love your shave, let them know. They'll give you a full refund. And right now, listeners of the podcast can redeem their Harry's trial set at harrys.com slash footballer. Here's what you're going to get. Weighted ergonomic handle for a firm grip, five-blade razor with lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel with aloe to keep your skin hydrated, and a travel blade cover to keep your razor dry and easy to grab on the go. Go to harrys.com slash footballer to start shaving better today. And we want to thank Lightstream. Look, if high-interest credit card bills are adding to your stress, there is a solution out there. You can pay off your credit card balances and save money with a credit card consolidation loan from our friends at Lightstream. With Lightstream, you can get a rate as low as 5.95% APR with auto pay, which is much lower than the national average of over 20%. Gross. Plus, your rate is fixed, so as the rates continue to rise, yours won't budge. Look, the online application, it's quick, it's easy. You can apply right from your phone. You can even get money as soon as the day you apply. For our listeners, apply now to get a special interest rate discount. The only way to get it is to go to lightstream.com slash footballers. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash footballers. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes a 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply. Subject to change without notice, visit lightstream.com slash footballers. For more information.
this week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. You guys heard of this Aaron Rodgers? Man. Al? Man, Al Borland, oh you man. there? I've heard of him. Big fan. Big fan? Big fan. I, I also heard you guys talk on, I don't know, Thursday, Friday, going, boy, people deciding between Gardner Minshew and Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers said, hey, I, I'm, I'm here. I'm yeah. still here. Yeah, he listened to the show, and <laughs> he was insulted. So you're welcome, America. 25 for 31, 429 and 5. Threw in a rushing TD just as a little bonus. Ooh. Has Kansas City, the Chargers on deck. This is the fifth time he's thrown for five touchdowns in a game. He hasn't thrown for four since week 17 of 2017. Well, you knew he that... He didn't have Devontae Adams. You knew that the week he was going to do it was when he didn't have Devontae Adams and Marquez Valdez, Scantling, and Geronimo Allison don't practice all week. They're going to be game-time decisions. You know, pretty hobbled. He's, you know, working with a skeleton crew. Blah, blah. <laughs> Scorch the earth. What in the heck was that all about? Is Aaron Rodgers back? I have a hard time believing that he is back, but I have. A, it's difficult to say that after what he <laughs> just did. Well, it's it, it's. Let's say this. This isn't Mitch Trubisky throwing up a six touchdown game, right? This is a quarterback who can take over a game when he wants to. Doesn't mean he has to all the time. Oakland was providing shootout ammo. In this game, consistently driving down the field. Yes, they had some uh, goal line turnover, but I mean, they were moving the ball consistently against this team that gave Aaron Rodgers the need to do this. So Kansas City, L.A., I mean, sure. It's not like you're not playing Aaron Rodgers, but he's been kind of a 10 to 12 range guy in your mind. Right. Well, he's been an actuality of 20 plus range guy for the very beginning of the season so it's it's nice to see that yeah i mean there was no pass points. rush there was no pass rush sure coming coming into this week he was quarterback 14 wasn't even a quarterback one he had very few weapons so i know some people pivoted off of him um but he was still very high in the rankings a guy that you're going to start it's nice to see him get one of these type of games because that's what you drafted him to do speaking of shootouts kirk cousins matthew stafford both threw for four touchdowns Kirk Cousins officially on fire. Last three games, 976 passing yards and 10 touchdowns. One of the things that, you know, with Mahomes going down on Thursday is fantasy owners actually got a little bit of a cheat code. If you had Mahomes and you know you're going to be without him, you had two or three days to, to sign some players. And some of the more available quarterbacks, Kirk Cousins, Matthew Stafford, Jacoby Brissett, all three had huge games this week. Matthew Stafford has the Giants next week. Then Oakland. Yeah. Kirk Cousins has the Thursday game against Washington. Then Kansas City. Jacoby Brissett had a big game as well. Four touchdowns. They stacked the box against Marlon Mack. And he torched them. He, he picked them apart. And so all three of those, to me, are great fill-in options for Patrick Mahomes owner. Yeah, I agree. There's there there's a lot and you could throw Sam Darnold into that mix. I don't expect him to have a great game tonight against the Patriots, but we've talked at length of the upcoming schedule. There are pivot options and, and a lot of people performed well, including yes. Un unfortunately, I mean, I guess it's Who is it, Jason? Stop. Who, 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 who had a big game? Jared Goff. Jared Goff because when you play the Atlanta Falcons, you get fantasy points. It's this. A lot of things in fantasy football are difficult. This particular equation, though, of quarterback plus matchup against Falcons has been very easy now for, look, we're going on five straight weeks, six weeks. We debated this a little bit before the show. Mike said Jared Goff was the easiest start ever. Yes. I, I didn't agree because he really hurt you last week. Really hurt you. He hurt you so bad that Sometimes, maybe you didn't start him this week. Do you know anybody in that boat, Jason? Well, um, and like that that boat involves it might cost you a victory this week. Okay, fuck clan, listen. <laughs> and we we made the water bet, Mike and I, because I had both these guys. I had Carson Wentz. I had Jared Goff on my roster. Took a deep dive. Oh, you guys look. water bet the two? We did, oh, of course. Because oh, I, you lost. I Jay. needed everything right now. <laughs> you, you think? <laughs> So, yes, I lost the water bet. I lost my rankings battle there. I lost uh, – and, and mo most importantly, 
You may lose. In- I may lose in the league of record in an absolute must win situation. So Foot Clan, be, be with me tonight so that you can have me here tomorrow. I need basically F- Le'Veon Bell cannot outscore Philip Dorsett by eleven points. If that happens, I'm done forever. <laughs> how I'm do we? How like- do we handy? <laughs> how do we handicap that? By the way, Ugh. I want the Foot Clan following along. Part of what makes this show different, I think, is how uh, invested we are on our teams. We try not to take on. You know, we're invited to so many leagues. We take on a limited amount because we want to be invested. You can hear it in Jason's voice. He's invested to the point of possible expiration Retirement. of his body. Yeah. <laughs> so how would you handicap that? Lev Bell outscoring Dorsett by more than 11. I would say that's got to be at least 50-50, if not. Ooh, I'm not going 50. I, w- I would go. <clears throat> oh! I think there's a 55% chance. That it happens? That it happens. That I lose. That you really? Did. I think I'm going Jason 70%. <laughs> I think that he is. Philip Dorsett is favorite. questionable. Oh, also, Foot there's Clan. the possibility he isn't the whole entire Patriots team questionable. Yeah. Also, uh, Foot Clan. I didn't want MVS because he was game time decision hobbled. He hasn't been doing much this year, so I traded to Andy. I trade. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the. I traded future picks so that I could pivot from MVS. To Philip Dorsett. And now, I would have won had I kept my picks and kept my player or played golf. I hate fantasy football. It's the, the worst. The grass is always greener on the other side, Jason. You you had the one. You had him on your team, and all you had to do was <laughs> say, Jared Goff, you're playing the Falcons. I'm putting you in, buddy. He sucked the whole year other than one game. He now was two. also Mike's start of the week, so all this best friend talks really... Really didn't come I, to fruition with I your lineup. I tried to help him. You did. Goff had a big game. Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's on pace for 1,300 rushing yards. That'll break the record. He's on pace for 184 attempts. He's a completely different player than I think we've ever seen. He's up there. I mean, Vic, Vic is the comp. How? Yeah. But, but when he takes off, it's oh, just you're not saying like, just as a runner. Yeah, I just okay. mean as a runner, he's different than yes. even the running quarterbacks that we have. He's far different. Uh, Kyler Murray. Uh, even R- Russell Wilson, right? Russell Wilson is the king of getting loose, getting the first down, sliding before people get within four feet of you, playing it smart. Lamar Jackson is built in a way. I, you know, Kaepernick. It reminds me a little bit of Kaepernick. I think running that's days. a pretty good comp. Yeah, and 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 he just he's faster than everybody else. He's How, faster and very very elusive. Very when he's very in the elusive. open field. How nice is it that he went to the Ravens to John Harbaugh to a to a to a coaching staff that will right. completely develop the team around and let him be himself. Because I know there were a lot of rumors of uh, the Chargers were very interested. I don't think that's an organization and a, and a coaching staff that would have – they would have tried to make Lamar Jackson something he's not. But it's been a – it is so fun to watch him. But I will say this, from a fantasy football perspective, I still think it's I, – I, like I said I said to Mike uh, while we were watching games – Last night, one of our, our arch rival mm-hmm. in League One, Adam Rank out there, he's riding high with Lamar Jackson. But I just can't imagine you keep that pace up with his body and you don't get injured at some point. So far, so good. Yeah, so far, so good. And, and you know, I know we debate the fantasy scoring of the rushing uh, quarterback. But, man, at least in Lamar Jackson's case, what he does on the ground has equated to v- so many victories over two years. When he sure, as soon as he got on this team last year, you won because of his legs. You're winning because he's five and two this year. You're winning because of the legs. I'm fine with it. Josh Allen, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Ryan Tannehill, uh, Tannehill with the big game, 312. You know, you you can start to glance the direction. Oh, of- Tannehill against Tampa Bay, absolutely. But the wide receivers, Corey Davis is a guy that. That's is, what I mean. You can you can look at it. and and uh, I think AJ Brown. I mean, it'll be between those two guys, which one scores on a weekly basis. Yeah, the the target he was looking, uh, you know, and obviously from game to game it might be different, but it, it appeared he was looking first to to Corey Davis. He's a guy that I have never rostered, never owned, and now I I think on waivers tomorrow we're going to be talking about picking him up. Interesting enough. Yes. Chase, uh, running backs, let's go. Chase Edmonds, Latavius Murray, Zeke, Dalvin Cook doing his thing. And then Austin Eckler. Hey! Austin Eckler had five carries. It didn't matter. Seven for 118 and one through the air on eight targets. He's on pace as a receiver 
for 112 catches, <laughs> 1,115 yards and nine touchdowns, 121 targets. That was put in there by editor Kyle. I take a small issue with the pace argument because of all the missing games and uh, certainly, you know, 15, 15 targets and 14 catches a couple weeks ago. But clearly Austin Eckler is going to be a feature part of this offense. He better be because we. The, another thing that Jason and I were talking about watching this game of the Chargers, Melvin Gordon looks objectively bad. He He does not look special right now. He cost them the game twice at the at the end. He needed to move the ball a foot, a single foot, and he ends up fumbling twice, essentially. One wasn't called to fumble, but he fumbled on the goal line twice. When you get him the ball, he's not making anything happen. Meanwhile, Austin Eckler is just – he is completely electric and helping this offense. Melvin Gordon right Would now – Would you sell him? Gordon? Yeah, but I, he scored a touchdown in this game oh, on a passing touchdown. Man. So would you sell him on the basis of that touchdown? Yeah, if you if you can get a, a good price for Melvin Gordon, if you can sell him as a running back one, as a high-end running back one, I would. I don't know if you can do that. Thankfully, he did get the touchdown. This is why I was saying two weeks ago he's right got a when big he came name. back. He's got a big name. I know. Sure. I, but, but So here's the guys that – like, man, I was going to say Aaron Jones, but I bet the Aaron Jones – owner would would not sell him for Melvin Gordon maybe Josh Jacobs I don't know the, the, the problem if you're going to sell away Melvin Gordon you have to get some kind of running back yes. back May, maybe it's no, just No you're bringing these names up and there's no way those deals happen right. which means that maybe you're right maybe you're stuck with him because no, but I if, think you are if someone the, needs wide receiver help right and and you true. could you could take uh, you know your Melvin Gordon and and Marvin Jones, oh my goodness, you know, he was on your bench. You, right. you could take those two guys and try to get Nick Chubb or something like that. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I get happen. what you're saying. It makes sense. Try. But, yes, try. Try. But. Well, we say it's not going to happen, but a lot of times we throw those out and we say it's not going to happen, then we get like 100 yeah. tweets being like, oh my gosh, look what I got. All right, Chase Edmonds against New Orleans next week, then San Francisco, two very difficult matchups. Uh, this is his third straight week with a touchdown and at least – 13 fantasy points. Are you starting him? Oof. I, I Probably. think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Even in those bad matchups, they're they're rough, but the Arizona Cardinals offense has produced. They're they've been producing for the running back uh, the whole season. He's been great. So yeah, I, I I'm going to still stay with him. We uh Latavius had a great game against Chicago, wore their defense down, really did nothing at all in the first half. Everything yeah. was in the second half. I will save all my Chicago Bears discussions for a more appropriately named segment. Yes. Excellent. Um, otherwise, got Aaron Jones got the passing touchdown. That was nice to see. Derrick Henry had his first touchdown outside of the one <laughs> out of his last eight in this game. 22 for 90 and one for Tennessee. It's better for Derrick Henry if this offense can move the football through 100%. the 100%. Uh, he can have more one-yard touchdowns. Leonard Fournette, who, by the way, since week two, leads the NFL in rushing yards. Had a big game. 29 carries. Yeah, I mean, that's why. You just If he gets 25-plus carries every single game, he's as safe as it comes. All right, Marvin Jones. Hey, how you doing? 10 for 93 and 4 on 13 targets. When he had he, the breakout game as a Bengal, was 20, it? 2013, by the way. When that happened? Yeah. Was it a four-touchdown game? It was. Okay. He is the only... Other than Jerry Rice and Sterling Sharp, they're the only wide receivers to do it twice. So, uh, congratulations! Insane. Four touchdowns for Marvin Jones. In fact, I believe he was matched up against Xavier Rhodes, and Rhodes had given up something like that's like he's given up three other touchdowns in the last couple of years, and he gave up four to Marvin Jones. So I might have that stat slightly wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was the majority of Xavier Rhodes. Touchdowns given up came in this game over the last few years. Zach Pascal, 6 for 102 and 2 on 7 targets. The question fantasy owners will want to know, and we'll talk about it on the waiver show, is do you really buy into it, or is it more of a flash in the pan? I think yeah. it's more of a flash in the pan because the the rotation of pass catchers, one week it's Ebron, Doyle, Pascal, uh yep. You know, this game, I, I said it before, they stacked the box against Marlon Mack. They made Brissett beat you. The recipe for beating teams in the future for Indianapolis is going to be on the ground. So you could get 
you could get stuck here. Is my my you, my take. You could get his line from the Kansas City game, which Kansas City generally juicy for your quarterback and wide receiver. Generally uh, two juicy. <laughs> Uh, and that was one for eight, one reception, eight yards, and one was a uh, wasn't one of these a, a shuffle a shovel pass of Pascal this week. I, yeah, I had to laugh, man, because you have these tap pass touchdowns mm -hmm. that are like one inch, and then you had the uh, Deshaun Watson touchdown this week. Did you see that one where he ran and he threw it to like he threw it a nice ten yards to Kiki QT, and it's a rush. Yeah, I hate. It's I, just so funny. I've said it forever because it's behind the line of scrimmage. I wish it was based on distance of ball travel. You can take over. Yeah, Jason wants it really difficult. Yeah, that's the that's the <laughs> issue, and I know it can't happen because there you go. it's subjectivity. Forward, backward. Sure. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Yeah, I agree. That's true. That's but true. yes, you know that these quarterbacks are that played in the '80s are looking at this, going, "Wait a minute, I could have padded my stats. Wait a minute, Coach, how did you not figure out that we could be doing this?" Troy Aikman tap passes to Emmitt Smith for five touchdowns again. Yes. Uh, Stephon Diggs, 7 for 142 on eight targets. He dropped the touchdown in this game. Uh, he's certainly a a player you have to throw out there the way that Diggs is playing. No dealing. Hopkins, 9 for 106 and 1. There it's he almost is. like he's a really good receiver. Almost. Right. Uh, he's By the way, the wide receiver 10 on the season. You're almost looking at Hopkins so far the way that you looked at David Johnson last year. You know, wide, wide receiver 10, that's not what you wanted. Right. Now, speaking of a player... But no Will who, Fuller. Who, who perhaps, maybe this guy is just good. The rest of the team, yeah, we're going to talk about him in a different section. But Allen Robinson keeps getting it done. 16 targets this week. 10 for 87 with a touchdown. He, His lowest production of the year. Week 2, 4 for 41. Allen Robinson. He's a must start. Is 100% a must start. And I'm like, I, I was nervous to play Allen Robinson in this matchup. I was nervous against... He's seeing him line up against Marshawn Lattimore, but Allen Robinson, is, dude, he to me he's back. They can't they can't run the football. The Bears can't run they, the football. And, they or, can't and when I say they can't run the football, I mean they literally cannot run the football an inch. Well, they can't do it. You they, say can't, I say don't. Yeah, I mean, well, what, it's what, become a little bit of both. It's, yeah, it's certainly both. But Allen Robinson, and then, you're saying because they passed it 54 times and rushed it seven times, Jason? Yeah, is that I, why? I think it's because they they didn't even have 10 rushing attempts. That's you choose that number. That's that's a that's a coach's but, choice. But they're they, when they have committed to it, they've been extremely inefficient. Jordan Howard ran circles around what this this rushing offense is doing right now. Matt Nagy is he is lost. <sighs> He's lost. We're not there yet. I know. I see. I I knew I it's wanted. Hard. I knew it, I wanted to talk about. Yeah. It. All right. We gotta talk. We gotta move on. Darren Waller. My goodness. Goo -goo -goo -goo. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Ebron with mm, top five catch of the year. Touchdown. Yes. One-hander. Yes. That was awesome. Four for 70 and one. Again, he is a very you, – you can roll him out there. You are hoping for a touchdown, and you're hoping you, you spun the wheel and you landed on a passing game for Indianapolis. Kyle Rudolph, like I said, five for 58 and one. This is – he's going to be relevant. With Adam Thielen gone? With, with Adam Thielen gone. I really believe so. Uh, however, Washington on Thursday, you know – do they delve and cook that entire game away? I don't know. I still think Possibly. if you can stream, he's a streamable tight end. Hunter Henry, 6 for 97. He's legitimately, uh, he's a must-start tight end at this point. Then Jimmy Graham, 4 for 65 and 1. When you watch the game, I feel like Jimmy Graham's super involved, and then I go to the stat line, and he's always got like three or four catches sure. at, the mo at the most. I don't know what happens. What do you make of Gerald Everett flashing back onto the scene he had the the down week two weeks ago, but that was San Francisco. Four for 50 with a touchdown, 10 targets, gets to play the Bengals. Does it count as on fire if you skip a week, Mike? Because he was no. hot, hot, off. No, I'm not saying he's on fire. But for, for like, for, Gerald Everett certainly hit some waiver wires. Would you play Everett place. or O.J. Howard I in would, this upcoming week? I would play Gerald Everett. Yeah, I, I would as well. I mean, I know O.J. Howard's running routes, but he's not getting the ball. So I, I'll go with the guy who's actually getting it done. Mike, you start. You have Dallas Goddard as your start of the week. I did. And he delivered four for 69 and a touchdown. And he Is fumbled. this a gray sports almanac situation? It was just reading the – like try to read the tea leaves of him being used. You combine the offseason 
I know it's coach speak, but they were saying we're going to go two tight end sets. Then he got hurt, so so you feel like well then it's never going to happen. But he just he got hurt. Now he's back. His snaps were increasing. His targets were increasing. I want to know why Jason's never been behind this guy. <laughs> <laughs> it took it took me to finally let people know who Dallas Thank Goddard you. is. What Thank a weird you, Mike, week. For You're starting the break. Starting Jared Goff. <laughs> starting Dallas Goddard. Those are we great, got a couple right. Great plays. So. All right, you guys ready to move on? Yes. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. There were plenty of oh. stinkers this week, and it was a, between the weather, the low-scoring affairs, and then the unsuspecting players breaking out. <laughs> and the Chase Edmonds. Yeah, Chase Edmonds, Marvin Jones. These were guys that were... I mean, Twitter is a vicious place for sob stories. If they, I mean... You need to vent, right? That's oh, what happens. You either vent or you bottle it up <laughs> just deep just, inside. Just, you know. just put that cap on. Don't worry. This will be fine. This is where I'm living right now, fellas. So Matt Ryan, Kyler Murray, Jimmy G, okay, Carson Wentz, stinkers at the quarterback position. And then I was surprised Russell Wilson didn't have a better game at home against Baltimore in a game script that he, he needed to be throwing the football. Didn't get a lot of help outside of, you know, Tyler Lockett. Yeah. Drop it, passes. I was going to say there were a lot of drop passes, uh, fumbles by other players. You know, it was, it was I'm sure, frustrating for Russell Wilson as well because it's like every time he's on the move, he'd make a good play that wouldn't count. Or, you know, he at the end, you know, he threw it to DK Metcalf who then – fumbles and then he the drive is over well and, and you don't have will disley anymore sure I mean, that, we can't underestimate part. that impact he was making and chris carson and, and the running game they couldn't get it going carson had a ton of volume 21 carries but only 65 yards he was coming off of three straight games of over 100 i think that played a a bigger role in in slowing this offense down at running back, we've got David Johnson. He had one carry for two yards, and that's it. He stood on the sideline the rest of the game. We'll see if he's active this week. Melvin Gordon, carry on Johnson. We talked about them. David, all right, we have to, all right, we get to start talking about it. All, all right. right. David Montgomery received two carries. <laughs> he fumbled the second carry, which came in the second half. I, I was talking to Jason mm -hmm. before the game saying, do, do I start Adrian Peterson or do I start David Montgomery? And last second, I went Peterson. And this is not an Adrian Peterson sloshing victory lap. But, oh, my gosh, he was so much better than David <laughs> Montgomery was. I mean, do we? I think we have to just take the uh. L on David Montgomery. He has shown very, very little. And Matt Nagy is the least trustworthy coach in football. Does he belong? Sincere question. Does David Montgomery belong on your bench? Oh, on you're saying as does opposed he belong, to dropping him. Yes. Does he belong on your bench as opposed to dropping him? Because we, we're out there, we're looking at all these other players that get opportunities. Look, two carries. That, the, two. The thing is about that, seven total carries in a game. I realize that that is now obviously in the realm of possibility for Matt Nagy, but that is also not the norm. This is an outlier extreme uh, they were down so much. 54 ugly passes. Oh, man. From Mitch Trubisky. Trubisky sucks. <laughs> I mean, he. Uh, oh. I mean, this isn't even like a hot take. Uh, you know, you, Mark he, Walton, should he be on your bench over David Montgomery? Oof. That These are the questions that you have to ask if you take the preseason hype out of sure. it, don't you? Well, yeah, Mark Walton, that one's a very, very interesting thing. Do you take the starting running back? for a terrible team, but Mark Walton showed out. He looked pretty good in his work against the Buffalo Bills. I don't think David Montgomery is a drop because <laughs> running backs are they're, they're tough to come by, and there could be better days ahead. It, it's, we're in like the, the exact opposite situation as, as the Vikings here with the Bears. I mean, at the beginning of the season, Kirk Cousins, the week one, throws the ball, what, ten times? Mm -hmm. Stephon Diggs is just garbage, 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 garbage. And then they were able to figure things out. That's why I don't think that Montgomery is a drop. I'm not saying one with full confidence 
that the Bears are going to figure out the running game by the end of the year. But that happens in the NFL. Yes. You they also don't get the luxury of figuring it out if their defense isn't what it was under Vic Fangio. And sure. right now, Chuck Pagano does not have them. Their linebackers can't stop the running game. Two straight games of over 100 yards. If they're behind, you got it. Matt Nagy is the kind of coach that pulls the running game off the table when they're behind. That's the fear and worry. And if two carries is in the range of outcomes, holy moly, Dude. do we have a – do they – they should be begging for Jordan Howard back, the disrespect they showed him. The Bears should trade for Matt Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> why Why would the Falcons the trade weirdest Matt take. Ryan? That's a weird take. No, I. <clears throat> there were there were reports coming out what from beat writers. What about Matt Moore? That might be better. The, the, coming out from beat writers and saying that the Falcons should trade Matt Ryan for picks. Because the Falcons are... are what? Well, the Falcons' window... I mean, I don't know. I think it's dumb. That's that's absolute insanity to but me. Trade point. Matt Ryan? No, that makes no sense. He's thirty four. <laughs> like you have you have multiple years. That's that's people getting clicks. I, Shame I'm just on saying, you. Okay. All right. Okay. How about this? Trade for anyone. Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> trade for Kyle Allen. You're, trade for no. You know, you know who you you're just, sleeping in the Trubisky bed, Matt Nagy. You're sleeping in it. And you can, and while you sleep, you can dream about Deshaun Watson. You can dream about Patrick Mahomes. And Bears fans out there, I'm sorry. I'm super sorry. Yeah, it's because you were one shankopotamus from, you know, the the title game, and now you're here, and you know where you're at, right? Yeah. We all know. You're grimacing. <sighs> you're looking at your friends. You want to know how long you're going to be buried here under the Trubisky. Barry. Cloud. I see what yeah. you did there. Very nice. There's a reason Jay Grizz wasn't here this morning at all. He's not even in the office. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's disgusted. He's in a cave. He's he's hibernating. The truth is, is David Montgomery was going to be a player if this offense was good. It's a bad offense. So right now, it's it's just a terrifying situation. Jordan Howard has 347 rushing yards on the season. The Bears have 300. Jordan Howard's in a committee in Philadelphia. He has more rushing yards than the entire Bears team. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm sorry. Things got very stinky very quickly. Devonta Freeman, he had a terrible game and then decided to uh, try to punch the lights out of Aaron Donald. So Ugh. that didn't work. What are you doing, man? Um, frustration's he, boiling over. He wanted an excuse for his fantasy output. And this is why I said, you asked, do I trust Devonta Freeman? No. I will never trust him. Yes, you, you foresaw the, the ejection. No, no, I just know that he is an untrustworthy fantasy ass. Well, now Edo Smith may be out for a while. That is true. Do you think Freeman can control the right hook? I think he will, not be, he will not be ejected for future fights. <laughs> uh, big stinker game for Mark Ingram. 12 for 46, no touchdowns. Only one catch has the bye week coming up. Marlon Mack, 18 for 44. Yeah. Disappointing. Houston, yeah, it is disappointing. Like I said, Houston said, hey, we're going to take away Matt, and they still lost. Um, Devin Singletary, this was not – this was a tough start yeah, that's, to me that's, I think because that's unfair. his first, first game back. Yeah, we, we, we had talked about him on the show that, yes, he has a sneaky start potential that he has juice, but he's only carried the ball 10 times. It's his first game back from the injury. We, we weren't – Game script was not what we thought. Yeah, and – there, there are better days ahead coming for Devin Singletary. I found it encouraging that they the first week he could be back, they made T.J. Eldon inactive, and they brought right. Devin Singletary and made him active. That's a good sign for things to come, but it was a scary start. Miles Sanders didn't do much, 6 for 21. Tough play right now. All right, Kenny Galladay. Kenny yeah. Galladay was 1 for 21. On two targets. He's been balling out. He's been a monster, and he's still 100% great and fine. You know, not everybody's bad lines are the same. This is what – there's a reason for everybody's poor games. Well, the reason for his poor game is simply that his quarterback and another wide receiver balled out. You, he doesn't get an option when Marvin Jones is catching four touchdowns. So it sucks if you had him, but he's fine. Galladay's been the wide receiver to own in four of the six weeks. The two weeks that Marvin Jones caught touchdowns, Galladay had 2.7 and 2.6 fantasy points. So you're just rolling the dice. I mean, that's what it is. Can't Let they just kind of share? <laughs> Can't they get along better and be like, one for you, yeah, one what it, for you? Like, can Marvin catch it and and say, no, I actually I, I give this away. I bequeath. 
this touchdown. I know I caught it, but give the stats to Kenny Galladay. The weird thing was the targets. It actually wasn't, you know, touchdowns, they go wherever. But the preceding five games, 9, 9, 8, 10, 9. In this game, two targets. Yeah. They, so it was just weird. They found something that worked, and it was the guy who, whoever was covering Marvin Jones. All right. Next on the list, Larry Fitzgerald. Oof. Only coming through with three targets, but – like we said, Chase Edmonds. This one you could, or you, you couldn't see it coming. I, well, this was very disappointing. Don't get me wrong. Like Kyler, Kyler's fantasy output that oh. sucked. But it's because Chase Edmonds could not be stopped. Terry McLaurin, he was he he had turned close to a full bench after the weather reports were coming in. Will Fuller got hurt. Michael Gallup. This one doesn't make sense. And it was really disappointing. It's two bad weeks in a row for Gallup yeah. after we thought he kind of leveled up. That's the truth. At, at against Philadelphia secondary, the it was everything was there. But well, Cooper nothing. Cooper had a great game. Uh, Tavon Austin got one of the touchdowns. He did. Uh, was it Jeff Swaim? Uh, no, he, not Jeff. No, who, who got Blake the, Jarwin? Blake Jarwin. Blake They're Jarwin. The same. They are not. Jeff Swaim is on the IR. And, they, they, and Blake Jarwin. About Jeff Jarwin. The Blake yes. Swain, exactly. Blake Jarwin, baby. Let's but, go. Uh, yeah, it, it just didn't. It didn't go his way. I've but got really sad news for you. T I I don't want to hear it then. Jason Moore put up zero zero uh, and zero on zero targets. Why didn't you tell us, Jason? I mean, you went out there and you basically <laughs> look. <laughs> the the I heard the show last week. Jason Moore. Was your 100% fab guarantee waiver pickup? Right, and the thing is, is he still? Which is. I didn't even realize it's the same name as you. Oh yeah, no, that co <laughs> coincidence. Uh, he's still the number one waiver pickup. The Tennessee Each Titans. Every week, yes, the Titans defense gets all the credit. They played great against me, and I'm going to show out next week. Just keep trust. Okay, him. is your route tree developing a little bit more than what we two, saw this week? Two routes now. Okay, two routes. I can run, and then I can run and stop. Okay, so. Those are two. All right. All You're, right. Work, work harder. Goosen. Evan Ingram, maybe the most disappointing player of the week against yes. Arizona. 100% One, the most disappointing. Rhett Ellison got the bomb touchdown. Yeah, Evan Ingram missed some time with uh, with going off the field for injury. Should have had a huge game. Should have had a huge game. Had a monster drop. Evan Ingram now balls out every week except when he's facing – an unbelievable tight end matchup. It got in his head. That's, if you saw, yeah, he possibly, yeah. he had the gloves on, drops the pass, takes the gloves off. Mm, it, was oh. gloves. it was the gloves' fault. Yeah, it's raining. I'm gonna be better without these gloves. Turns out I'm not. One for <laughs> six. A poop in his big boy pants against Arizona, and Rhett Ellison ends up catching the touchdown. Yeah. The that way, Arizona still looks terrible against tight ends. <laughs> yeah, because the, they are. Because they are. Yeah. yeah. The the top. Tight ends really stunk it up. I mean, Ertz. Now is Andrews is Ertz, Kittle is Ertz a problem? Like is is Goddard a problem for Ertz in the sense that great Ertz is does he exist? Yeah, he exists. He exists. Yeah. Just a okay. down game. Would you believe see the, the thing is Ertz is fine. So I'm not I'm not saying this as like you Zach Ertz move away from him, trade him away. He's a reliable tight end, but the upside of Zach Ertz disappears but, when there's other guys who take the targets. And Dallas Goddard is is one of those guys. But he's it's not, been it's been pretty bad. I mean, look, we're seven weeks in, and it's it doesn't take much to be a top twelve tight end. It doesn't take much at right. all. Of the seven weeks, he's only been a top twelve tight end two times. I mean, he's sucked. Uh, yeah, they are. I mean. Well, double digit fantasy points. He's three, sucked three for of the expectations because he's uh, the lab before this thirty eight yards. He was averaging over fifty yards a game. Part of the preseason talk about Zach Ertz was tempering expectations and whether you were willing to spend a third round pick on him, because historical career data versus last year's insane target numbers, they didn't add up. And Ertz can produce <laughs> when he gets targets. He still had uh, seven last night or five. Pre preceding weeks, nine, seven targets. So the offense is not moving. Right. Deshaun yeah, I mean, Jackson. you have to down, downgrade your expectations. Yes. I miss you, Deshaun. <laughs> I miss you. 
Darren Fells fell back to earth. Two for 27 on two targets. Oh, what? I'm sorry. It's almost as though he's Darren Fells. Stinkers of the Week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. Oh, and my... Look, we know all about it. My son knows all about it. Odor Eaters is taking care of business. Oh, <laughs> in oh, the right house. Fixing problems. Yeah. He got... He got the stank feet. Oh, your son does. Yes, like the post. Not fo- anymore. Post. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Stank feet. Yes. Inherited? No, not. Oh, good question. Probably, probably from the wife. Oh, <laughs> hey. yes. Get bodied. All right. Want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. Aaron Jones signed Chrome Speed Mini Helmet, sixty-five dollars. Nice, nice deal. Go to pristineauction.com. Use the code Ballers. We'll be back with a waiver show tomorrow. I'm I'm happy to be back in here, guys. We're happy ice, to ice have cream, you back. <laughs> ice cream's a hell of a drug. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell Look, you. You're, it's it's not the best for your immune system. Look, who, I, I, who don't like, know? I don't like this correlation. <laughs> I got sick independent of my ice cream habits. All I right. See. I see. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for 800 shows, Foot Clan. 800 more. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.